just a couple of minutes. We'll give people time to jump in. A room full of history lovers. I love it. I was just enjoying, I'm sure that a number of you are excited for the Mariners uh, playoffs uh, coming up this weekend. I was looking at the browsing the stacks exhibit um, in the lobby in the ledge building in the office of the Secretary of State and uh, noted the 1996 Mariners World Series ticket that uh, clearly went uh, unused, maybe this year. Give folks one more minute to sign in. All right, as we uh, approach 103, I'll go ahead and get us uh, get us started. I, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Deputy Secretary of State Randy Bowler Jack, and I am just honored to welcome you to today's webinar introducing our new Washington State Archivist, Heather Hirataka. Heather is excited to share how her experience as a longtime public servant has prepared her for her new role as well as her vision for connecting more people to the archives and preserving Washington's history. Uh, Heather's appointment uh, affirms Secretary of State Steve Hobbs' passion for Washington history and his steadfast belief that a greater understanding of our shared legacy can empower us to create a better future for all Washingtonians. Heather is the first woman to serve as Washington State Archivist and we believe she is the right person at the right time to lead the state archives, especially as technology is changing, how we preserve, protect, and share the records and other information that tell our state's amazing stories. 
Heather joined the Secretary of State's office in 2017, and in 2018, she was named Director of Community Programs, overseeing, among other programs, Legacy Washington. Previously, she worked with the Thurston County Auditor, where as Licensing and Recording Manager, she oversaw the Public Permanent Archival Records. Heather earned her bachelor's degree in law and justice from Central Washington University. She's also a recent graduate of Leadership Thurston County, a Thurston County Chamber Foundation program that develops informed, skilled, and committed community leaders, which I think absolutely matches Heather's passion. So without further ado, I'm proud to introduce Washington State Archivist, Heather Hirotaka. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for the warm welcome and thank you for that introduction, Randy. Um, those of you who may have worked with me in the past or know me well know that talking about myself is not my strong suit. Um, I can talk about a lot of things and I can talk your ear off probably, but not about myself. So I appreciate that, uh, that informative little bio on who I am and, and how, I, how I kind of came to become the State Archivist, which I'm thrilled to be here and be with all of you. Just so you know, if you do have any questions throughout this process, please throw them in the chat. We're gonna look at them at the very end to make sure that uh, we have time to get through sharing some information with you about what Archives does and who our people are and why it matters, why it should be important to everyone. So um, please feel free to throw them in and then we're gonna tackle them all at the end. And um, for those of you who have worked with me, you know I talk super fast and I say a lot and I barely breathe but I'm gonna try real hard to breathe today for, for you for, and for me. Um, so just a little bit more about my background and, and Randy did a great job of sharing kind of my work history background. Um, I had the great fortune of working at Thurston County, which I know I have some of my Thurston County uh, people on the call, Maureen, who's worked in records management forever and um, Aaron who works with her and so, really great partners um, of the archives now and have been for a really long time. But I had the fortune of working at Thurston County, which was an amazing, wonderful place to work. And whenever someone asks me, gosh, there's an opening at Thurston County, should I apply? I wholeheartedly say, yes, you should apply. It's a wonderful place to work. So I had the benefit of being there for 18 years. And um, the majority of my time there, I spent in the recording and licensing division, which was really rewarding for me because I had not grown up in Thurston County. I am the daughter of a military man. And so I grew up everywhere. I lived in Europe for six years. Um, I spent some time in Yakima, Washington, where I graduated from high school. And so I've been a lot of different places, but I didn't have roots here in Thurston County. And when we moved to Thurston County, um, I wasn't even married at the time, I was just a baby. And I really wanted to pick a job where I could connect with the people in my community. And so I went to Thurston County. I actually, um, Maureen, who's on the call from Thurston County, I followed in her mother's footsteps and started at their public information desk. And it was such a wonderful, way to get to know all the county departments to really get to learn who the people were and and look and say gosh where where do i want to be which division do i want to work in and and the auditor's office was always amazing and appealing and um they won me over and so i went to work for them in 2000 and really really enjoyed being there and creating those permanent public records those property records, marriage records, um, administering the ACP program, which is a, the address confidentiality program. If you don't know about it, you should definitely look it up on our website, but it is a program that I am so proud of and I oversaw before I came to archives, but they protect the addresses of victims of certain crimes. And we got to work with, with those programs and we got to protect people's marriage records when they would come in and apply and we got to protect their voting records. and. It was really an amazing opportunity to grow and to learn so much about what state and local government had to offer. And so Thurston County was like a true highlight of my career and being there taught me so much of what I think helps me be good in this role. It helps me 
um, be able to explain how sometimes local governments got to decisions that they got to, because I was there as some of those decisions happen. Um, for anybody who's in recording on this call or has worked in recording, when I started in recording at Thurston County, it was $7 to record a document. And I think you all know it's not $7 now. So it's been a long time, but it's been an amazing experience. And I think that those skills and attributes really transferred nicely into the archives and helped me see kind of both sides of of not the problem, both sides of the benefits, both sides of the collaboration and how we can work together really, really well. And so I really enjoyed my time at Thurston County. It was wonderful. And in 2017, um, Secretary Wyman called me and was like, hey, I want you to come join me at the Secretary of State's office. And I was like, huh, maybe, like really? Um, so it took a minute for me to kind of process that. And, and I came in and joined her executive team. And then in 2018, uh, took over community programs, which um, include the programs, the address confidentiality program. Again, super proud of that program. It also included the combined fund drive, which is a statewide giving program. And it included, which I'm also extremely proud of that group. Um, they bring in about $5 million a year that goes to charity, which is fantastic. And it's an easy payroll deduction. So you can set it and forget it. That's my little plug for them. Um, and then Legacy Washington and Legacy Washington will get to in my PowerPoint, but it really tells the compelling stories of extraordinary people. And these aren't just people that come to mind automatically. They're not just the big names of Washington. Some of them are names you'd never know unless we told their story. So I got to oversee these three really diverse, awesome programs. And when I met with Secretary Hobbs, I think he really saw the passion that I had for all of the programs, but he really saw the passion for Legacy Washington and the importance of that history and capturing that history and telling those stories so that everyone knew. So when he asked me to come to archives, um, my first question was, what happens to all of my other people? Where do they go? And can I take legacy with me? And so luckily, brilliant idea of Secretary Hobbs. He let me take them with me and um, they are now part of the archives and we'll get to talk with them and we'll get to talk about them a little bit more. But why archives is so important to me just as an individual. Um, you know, I mentioned that I grew up as as an army child, a military child. And if you can imagine, and some of you probably have this in your history, I have nothing from my childhood. Like I have no toys that I grew up with. I have no baby clothes that I had when I was a baby. I have none of those items because we moved constantly. And that history became really important to me. And that lack of history, that lack of photographs, the lack of um, the stories being told to me, it really, really weighed on me. And so I think that for me, it's about recognizing where I come from and connecting to where I come from and how do I piece that back together? And luckily I'm able to piece a lot of it back together because we have archives, not just in Washington state, but across the nation. And so I'm able to go back to some of those places and say, gosh, I wanna see the marriage record of my great grandparents in Pennsylvania and they're able to pull it. But what's even more amazing is if I don't know where to go or who to contact in Pennsylvania, I have a staff member, Jewel, here who does know. And when you call the archives, she says, let me help you. Not only let me help you, but let me do some of the work for you. I'm going to connect you to the right resources. And that's the beautiful thing about archives is we don't have everything in the world. We can't. We'd be hoarders. That would be no fun. But we have the connections to get you to the people who do have it and we want to serve you. And so um, that's part of why archives mean so much to me. It's about putting together my own story and making sure that that my story as I live and breathe becomes part of the thread of where I'm at, right? So I got married and I applied for my marriage license in Thurston County and my daughter will always be able to go back to Thurston County and find a copy of my marriage certificate. And she might even be able to go to the digital archives and find a copy of it. So it's a beautiful thing because we have these resources and we're able to connect people. And that's a great thing. Um, I grew up in Yakima for as much as you can say I grew up anywhere. I spent five years in Yakima, um, which is longer than I spent anywhere else consecutively. But the deed to my parents' house, 
I can find that in the records of Yakima. And I can find that probably in the digital archives. And that's an amazing thing because it's about connecting and making it accessible. So it's really important to me that we keep the records, that we make them accessible, that we preserve them properly. And we have the best people here that do that very work, which makes me so proud. Um, and, and that we tell the stories, that we don't forget where we came from. And um, another really personal reason why archives are so important to me is that my husband is fourth generation Japanese American. And what that means is his grandparents who lived in Bellevue were incarcerated and sent to an internment camp in Tule Lake. And my father-in-law was born in that internment camp. And so it's important that we not forget that story, right? If we don't tell that story, then we, then we risk the chance of doing it again. We risk the chance of not understanding someone else's lived experience or why they might react a certain way or why they might have a feeling that's a certain way. So it's really important to me that we also tell those stories and that we we seek to learn and that we seek to um, understand better where we all came from. So that's why archives is important to me. How do I create a vision for archives when it's already so amazing, right? And that was the biggest challenge as I came into this role. How do I take something that comparatively to every other state, we're right up there. We're like in the top position, in my opinion. I mean, others might argue with me and I'll take them, but we're doing really amazing across the board. We have a world-class digital archives. We have branch locations across our state, which most states don't have. And they look to us and go, oh my gosh, you guys are doing it so much better than we are. How do you have these branches? So we've really done a good job. And how do you, how do you take it and say, we're gonna take it to the next level? What is the next level when you're already operating at that? So after a lot of conversations with different staff and Terry, who is the wonderful deputy state archivist who carried archives from January until I took over in July. So huge debt of gratitude to him. Um, he and I talked and I talked with different staff and I kind of listened to what people really expressed to me that they thought archives needed. And I decided that the vision for archives is an idea. So what the heck do I mean about an idea? I mean that our focus and our goal, as it's always been, and we'll take it to that next level and we'll do even more with it, is to focus on inclusivity, diversity, equity, and access idea. And it really means that we're connecting to a variety of people. We're connecting to our partners in state and local government. We're connecting to our researchers or maybe the people who've never heard of archives before and are attending a rotary meeting. I'm going to connect with you. I'm going to tell you why you should care about archives and I'm going to make you love us. Um, our communities whose stories still need to be told, right? Those communities who maybe have this, this rich story that's part of our fabric and our history in this state that need to be told through our legacy program. And our communities who aren't in Olympia. So how do we better serve those communities across the state? How do we get out there and make sure that they know about us and that they feel heard and seen by us? And that's, that's kind of where I think our teams, we already do such a great job, but we're looking forward and saying, how can we do even more? How can we have every household in the state of Washington know who Archives is? It's a big lift, but I'm, I'm pretty willing. And I think the staff here are pretty willing as well. So I'm super excited about taking us to that place and to that vision and, and getting us there. So now I'm gonna share a slideshow because you know, that's what you do, right? You share a slideshow. So I'm gonna share a slideshow. I'm gonna hope that I don't mess it up. Um, and if I do, I know you guys will bear with me and you'll be super kind and, and won't call me out for messing it up. Uh, but you can put a comment in the chat if I mess it up, if you want. And it's gonna take me just a second, cause I gotta, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to share. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I'm hoping that you all can see my screen. Randy, can you yes, give me a thumbs can. up? Okay, perfect. Excellent, okay. So, this is your Washington State Archives. It's not mine. I have the cool title. I have the honor and the 
the wonderful luck and, and opportunity to serve in this role, but it's not Heather here at Taka's Washington State Archives, it's yours. And it is yours, not because you work in state and local government, not because you work for a county auditor, it's yours because you live here and because you are now a part of the history and the fabric of Washington State. It is your archives and I hope that you know that and I hope that you believe that and I hope that you utilize it as if it is yours. So what do we do? We do a lot, we do so much and I'm gonna walk you through all of it in the next, like, I'm gonna say 25 minutes so that we have time for questions. Uh, what do we do? We have collections and we have, so, you know, I don't think you can see my pictures moving, can you? Sorry, I'm gonna figure this out, you guys. Nope, we're just seeing the first page of your slide deck still. And now you're probably not seeing anything, are you? I'm seeing you. Oh, okay. Sorry. It's going to take me a lot of second here. I'm going to get it back. It's going to be okay. This is the fun of um, of live live TV, right? It's not live TV, <laughs> but it's like live TV. Mm -hmm. How exciting! Right? You get to go on this adventure with me. <laughs> Sorry, it'll take just a second. I don't know why it wasn't advancing. Probably because I'm not super tech savvy. Okay. And I have no doubt at some point, someone's gonna come into my office and be like, let me help you, Heather. We know you need help. Hmm. Okay, well, Jamie may have to come in and help me. I see someone running down the hall. There we go, it's Jamie. We'll see, maybe I'll get it before she comes. No guarantees though, folks. Oh, wait, we might have some luck here. There we go. There we go. You guys can see it now. Yes, Randy, yes. you're good. Okay. And now I'm going to advance and we'll see if you can see the yes. Now yeah. you can see the advance slide. Yes. <laughs> Okay, good, good, good. Give me one more second. I'm going to switch one other thing and then, okay, perfect. Now we should be good. Okay, so we have collections. We have um, collections across our state and we're really proud of those collections and the things that we offer accessibility wise to all of our patrons, including state and local governments. Um, and we have different regions. We have different branches and some of you may or may not realize that. We have the state or South and Southwest records collection, which are here in Olympia. These are the people that um, if you're located here in Olympia, you're probably dealing with the most, especially if you have research questions and you need a little bit of research done on something. Um, and so if you call the archives here, you are most likely um, to, to interact with some of our really wonderful researchers who really specialize in um, the public government records. So they know so much about everything from the establishment of the Washington Territory in 1853, continuing right on up to the present. And included among our collection are the papers of each of our governors, which is fantastic, the legislative records, court records, records from all state agencies, and all of the official records of the state, including the governor's proclamations, executive orders, election results, and the laws that have been passed and signed. So we have quite quite the history here, and for anyone who does love the history, this is a great place to come. Local government records we also have, and those include um, records from county auditors, county clerks, the treasurer, the board of county commissioners, and the municipalities. We also have school district and other service districts. Only a small percentage of the records created by these offices are transferred to the state archives. So you might think, gosh, like, what is that? Like, how, how do we know if it goes to the state archives? And that's where your local record centers come into play. That's where 
um, the people like Maureen Duncan come into play where she's managing those records that stay within her county and then have a retention and get destroyed later. So it's pretty exciting. Um, we select records for their archival value as legal and historical evidence of policy development, implementation, and effect. The transfer of records to the state archives is an ongoing process. Some historical records remain with their originating office pending future transfer to the archives. We also have our central region collections, which are located over in Ellensburg. And we're really proud to have these branch locations. Um, it really is kind of uh, a gold star standard for archives to be able to have branches and to have them managing the records of that region is phenomenal. So again, some of their records include those records from the county auditors, the clerks and the treasurers, board of county commissioners within those areas. Um, and some of their major subject area of records are genealogy, land use and property, legal system, education records. So they're dealing with a wide variety of um, different uses for their records and they're super knowledgeable in, in how they know to search for them. Um, our Eastern Region Collection um, again, has very similar records, those auditor, clerk, treasurer records, different municipalities. Um, and again, they're looking at their archival value. Um, and so they have amazing collections there. Their collections span the years from the territorial period as well to the present. They include school census records, um, tax assessment rolls, court dockets, case files. And the Eastern Regional Branch is located in Cheney, Washington. We'll talk a little more about Cheney. Um, and then our Puget Sound Region collection is over in Bellevue. And um, again, same sort of records. They're servicing that region that they oversee or that they work closely with, and they have lots of different records there. And then the Northwest Region is located up in Bellingham, and we're super happy to have another branch up in Bellingham. I think we um, have a great relationship. So all of these are either on a campus or super close to a campus and a college campus, and we're really happy with our relationships that we have with each of our partners at those higher, higher learning institutions. And so um, the Northwest region is no different. They also have um, amazing collections there and staff to, to help you with that. And then digital archives, um, we do have a world-class digital archives. Like I'm not just saying that because I'm proud of them. Like it's a fact that our digital archives is years and years ahead of everyone else. And we're really, really proud of that. And that data center is also located in Cheney. So we have quite a few people over in Cheney working some magic. So your local branches, if you, are in um, Clark, Cowlitz, Grace Harbor, Lewis, Mason, Pacific, Skamania, Thurston, or Waukiacum County, you probably use the state and Southwest Regional Branch more than any of the other branches if you're looking for records related to those areas. And if you're working with this branch, you may be working with some of our amazing staff. We have Ben, Tracy, Jewel, Sarah, and Lupita who all are here to answer your research questions, answer the phone when you call, you will get Jewel most of the time and she's great, but we have such great staff here that um, really are available to help you. And again, strive to serve, serve you, ser serve our partners, serve the public. So um, that's who you might be working with here. If you are located in Benton, Chelan, Douglas, Franklin, Grant, Kittitas, Klickitat, Okanagan, and Yakima counties, you're probably using our Central Washington branch. And if you're using that branch, you have probably interacted with Bridget and Scott. And so, again, we're really happy to have a branch in the central part of Washington to serve those counties. That's a lot of counties serviced by that branch. So we're really happy that we have have a branch there. And then our Eastern Washington branch, if you're located in Adams, Asotin, Columbia, Ferry, Garfield, Lincoln, Ponderé, Spokane, Stevens, Walla Walla, and Whitman counties, you're probably interacting with our Eastern branch. And you're working with our wonderful professionals there, Lee, Debbie, and Frank, depending on what you're looking for. One of them is probably helping you along the way. And then we have our Puget Sound branch, which is located in the heart of Puget Sound in Bellevue. 
and they are working with King, Kitsap, and Pierce counties because they're quite voluminous and they need to have less counties and, and more, more space to be able to work with them. Um, and if you're working with those counties and working with that branch, then you probably have met Emily or my Dory or another Emily. So we have two Emilies there. So um, when in doubt, just ask if they're Emily and you may, you may get them. Um, but those are our staff at the Puget Sound branch. And then we have our Northwest branch up in Bellingham, which again, so thrilled to have a branch up in that area. And our local governments that use that branch are Clallam, Island, Jefferson, San Juan, Skagit, Snohomish, and Whatcom counties. And there you're probably working with Jeanette, Molly, or Allison. So we're really happy to um, have you kind of know who our people are. And hopefully the next time you call for something, you're thinking, oh my gosh, did I hear their name? Do I know who they are? Um, and so again, really happy to kind of introduce you without giving you their faces and everything else because I didn't quite prepare for them for that so they probably would not be happy if I popped them up on the screen but uh, lots of great staff really knowledgeable um, they're the ones that you want to ask your questions to and and have them help you with the research so speaking of research each branch has a tool called ask an archivist and this is a really great tool and I have to say um, if you have people in college or you have people in high school and maybe they're writing a paper on something related to Washington history, use Ask an Archivist. Man, it is so such a great thing. I wish I had known about this when I was in college. It is fantastic. So you send us a request, be specific so that we know what you're looking for. If you have things like dates or date ranges, locations, names of individuals, put all of it in there. We're gonna help you. It's a no charge um, process to put a research request in with the archives. We don't charge for simple retrieval of documents, which is awesome. If there's a particular request that appears to warrant research fees, we're gonna let you know before we start. So if you're looking for, you know, some really big, cool thing that's gonna take us two weeks to pull all the documents, we're probably gonna have to talk a little bit about what that looks like. But we're never gonna proceed without telling you, there's no surprise. So there's no fee for individuals to come in and conduct a search in person at the archives. Um, we do ask that you call us and make an appointment because sometimes you're looking for a record that we don't have at our branch or we have it, but it's down in the stacks and it's gonna take us some time to get that. So we're taking um, appointments and we're seeing lots of researchers coming in and utilizing the archives. So please know that you can do that. We also have records online. You can do online record searches through our digital archives. We have um, an index to our archive catalog. So you can certainly go on and look at all of the amazing things we have on our website. And, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when I get further in, because I was gonna tell you something cool and then I was like, save it, save it for a later slide, Heather. Uh, Legacy Washington, this is the program that came over with me to archives, which I'm super proud of. Um, extraordinary people, compelling stories. So these are the stories, again, of people that you may not have ever heard of, but when you hear the story that they have, the contribution that they've made to Washington history, you will be as amazed and as big a fan as I am. Legacy Washington documents extraordinary stories in Washington history. This collaborative venture spearheaded by the Secretary of State, Steve Hobbs, relies on original sources at the Washington State Library and the Washington State Archives, as well as the heritage organizations across our state. The work of Legacy Washington can be found in libraries across the country and museums of Washington. We recently collaborated with our cohorts at the Washington State Library and Archives to feature their collections. The exhibit, Browsing the Stacks, is currently on exhibit in the Legislative Building here in Olympia. So if you're around, come check it out. It's free, you can come in and see it. Um, we have hosted several Lunch and Learns during the months of August and September to allow staff to share more information from the collections. Um, ben, who works here in our Olympia branch, actually uh, did a really great presentation on Century 21. He found some really amazing old photos of when Elvis Presley came to visit. Like it was pretty fantastic. Um, and then Maggie Cogswell, one of our researchers and our, in our, I'm sorry, she's not a researcher. She is a digital preservation archivist. She did an entire presentation on the Muriel Little scrapbooks, which is a phenomenal 
a phenomenal story to be told. It is, um, she was a Senate hostess and she kept all of these scrapbooks that tell this amazing history and story of what it was like to be this hostess during that time. And um, she worked really hard on this project and did a great presentation. And so come over and check out our exhibit. We're really excited about it. Um, since 2008, the Legacy Washington Project has written 22 books. These range from subjects like Slade Gordon and John Spellman to Billy Frank Jr. and the Korea 65 War. So um, we've also created 10 exhibits to highlight their work. And these exhibits are featured the first year in the Secretary of State's office. And then they travel around the state. Their um, first stop is the Kirshner Museum, which is a great partner of us in Puyallup, Washington. So um, if you are interested, if you're with a heritage organization or a museum and you're like, gosh, we want to get on that list, let us know. We're happy to happy to work you into a rotation. Um, but we do take our exhibits across the state and we share them with historical societies and museums. And we love that partnership. So some of the staff that you might be working with, if you were to talk to Legacy Washington, would be John, Bob, Aaron, Amber, and Lori. And they are our amazing team at Legacy Washington. Records management, I think most of you on this call, somehow, some way, touch records management. And that's a really awesome thing because it means you as our state and local government partners are working with us to know what retention schedules are, what the dispositions are, how to handle your records. And so um, I'm super excited that there are so many of you on the call. So our state and Southwest Regional Branch serves as a regional resource to state and local government agencies in the area of public records and information management. These services include consultation, workshops, and the coordination of additional services. So our consultation, what does that mean, right? I was like, what does that mean? Our branch staff can provide consultation on a variety of records and information management topics, including the implementation of authorized records retention schedules, establishing a records management program, records destruction, files, file management, essential record protection, and disaster preparedness. Consultation occurs both by telephone and by scheduled on-site visits. And we love to come out and see you and meet you where you are and learn about your records and see how we can help you um, really make sure that you're handling your records in the best way that works for, for you, for your agency, for the state's history as a whole. So um, we love to do that. We love to get staff out there. And then we also do workshops. Um, we have branch staff who participate in workshops concentrating on various records management topics. Workshops typically are designed for specific client groups or similar records management concerns and are intended to provide attendees with the basic tools for managing public records according to approved retention schedules. Workshops are offered both to statewide organizations and to individual local groups. And what I love about this is that um, the leader of this team is Russell, and he really looks at what questions are we getting? What do we need to do a better job of educating people on? If we're getting the same question over and over again, we need to have a video, we need to have a webinar, we need a, a one pager, we need a, uh, you know, a fact sheet on how to do it differently. So we're really fortunate that, um, that this team actually listens to, to the requests that come in, they track it, they're continually working to provide the best service to you in state and local government. And, and it works so well and it's so successful. And I just went to a conference and heard about how our records management team like is the envy of so many states, but it works so well because we have partners like you. We have partners who work with us, who communicate with us, who ask those questions, who aren't afraid to come and collaborate. And so we really appreciate that. So if you're working with our records management teams, you're probably working with Russell Rachel, Sean, Emily, Scott, Molly, Jamie, and our brand new Bonnie, whose picture is not on this slide because she just started this week. So we're really happy to have um, this great team who, who puts this amazing work together. And, and if you do have questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to any of them. So acquisitions. This team is amazing, and I talk about this team probably as much as I talk about any of our teams in our office. And um, I feel like Dave, who kind of runs this team, if he knew how much I talked about him, he'd probably be like, I'm going to quit talking to you because I'm going to start getting all these phone calls and people are going to put me on a pedestal and they should. Um, 
this is the group that decides what comes in. What is what what can we take in? What what do we need to get rid of? What can we take in? They work really hard to um, to work with the customers and and to create good policies and processes that allow us to appraise records in a way that is meaningful and really looks at the the historic contribution to the state of Washington. So Washington State Archives has, assess has accessioned 1,493 cubic feet of state records and 2,499 cubic feet of local government records over the last fiscal year. So just a fiscal year, no big deal. That's all we were doing, it's fine, it's no biggie. Um, they're amazing. We've also added so many, almost 9 million electronic records were added to the digital archives in the last fiscal year. So that's another little fun fact. But we work really hard to um, follow our, our um, I guess our, our kind of vision and our mission to collect, preserve, and make available for research the documentary memory of Washington for present and future generations. The appraisal of public records is the cornerstone of determining which public records will form the state's documentary cultural heritage. The archives appraisal practices have the objective of documenting authority, foundation, and structure of government public records that provide evidence of the source of authority, foundation, and structure of the state's local and state government entities, primary functions and programs of government, public records that provide evidence of deliberations, decisions, and actions that influence the administration of government and the people, enduring rights and entitlements, public records that provide evidence of the legal status of individuals and groups within the community, as well as their fundamental right to participate in the affairs of the state and claim entitlements and protection by that state. Property right records, so we have a significant impact on individuals, public records that provide substantial evidence of the impact of government decisions and actions on individuals and communities, the interaction of people with government and the influence of the communities on government decision-making. So you can see they're really looking at what we're taking in and what is that value and, and what's that long-term impact on our state's history and are we telling the stories, right? Are we, are we making sure that if people have been impacted by a government decision that we have that here and that we're taking it in? Um, an important project that we have underway in Olympia, this is really important. We are working on a barcoding project and I know some of my barcoders are on this call. They are really important to what we're doing right now. Um, this project is to help us get ready to move into a new library archives building. So imagine if we didn't have this wonderful team barcoding our collection and making sure that we know where every piece is when we move into that new building, what an absolute mess that would be if we didn't have this team. So we are so thankful. I am so thankful to have this team. They are going through and making sure that everything is barcoded, that, um, that we know where it is, that we know where it's going to be in the new building when we get there, that we can find it again. Um, they have barcoded approximately 30% of our collection, which equates to about 48,000 individual boxes, volumes, and maps. So this is absolutely vital for us to move into a new building and um, <laughs> we couldn't do it without them. So this team, um, the acquisitions team consists of Megan and Dave, and then our amazing project employees are Allison, Deverick, and Whitney. So we love them all. Imaging services. So some of you work with our imaging services to create microfilm, get microfilm duplicated, um, microfilm conversion, scanning. So imaging services is improving the way state and local governments retrieve information. We're using innovative digital conversion techniques um, and really working to convert microfilm and paper documents into a user-friendly digital image. And I know a lot of you do use this team and they are also amazing. Um, and this team consists of Patrick, Devin, Kevin, Linda, and Kathy. So if you're working with any of them, um, just know that they are, they are right top of the line, getting stuff done and, and making magic happen. We also have our record center, which is also amazing in and of its in and of its own self. Um, the record center at the state provides low cost secure storage for records that must be retained for an audit or legal or fiscal reason, but they're no longer used frequently enough for an agency to keep within their own office storage area. 
So record services are available to all state agencies, including community colleges and universities. Um, all records sent to the record center remain in the legal custody of the originating agency. So we're just housing them. We're like a hotel. We're taking them in. We're keeping them safe. Um, the record staff will accurately retrieve records from storage or return them to client offices in a timely manner upon request. So when you send those requests in every morning, this staff and team are coming in. They're pulling those requests for you and they're getting them out in that in that day's mail if they can. So they're working really hard. All of the records are checked out and tracked using a started can't speak state of the art equipment and technology and training is offered to all of our clients on all aspects of the record center procedure. So if you're feeling like, oh, gosh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to give that to them. I don't know if I trust them. Come out. Let us give you training. Let us show you what we do. Let us show you how safe and amazing and affordable it is. Um, and then finally, when the records reach the end of their established retention periods, um, we send them to a secure shredding facility upon the agency approval. So if the records are designated as archival, they're transferred to the state archives for appraisal to determine if permanent preservation is appropriate, right? That's Dave and his team. And if not, if they've met their retention, they're ready to go. We kept them. We don't have to keep them anymore. Then upon that agency approval, we're sending them off to be shredded for you. So, um, yeah, it's a great team. If you're working with any of our people out there, you're probably working with Larry, Travis, Jake, Chad, or Katie, and they're all awesome and um, really positive, great people and would love to hear from you if you have any questions. So the new library archives building. We're so excited about this building and I'm happy to report that we are nearing the completion of the design phase on the new building. And I have a little flyover video that I'd love to share with you. So you can kind of get a feel and a sense of what's happening in our world. So we're gonna see if I can play it and I think I can. But we'll see, <laughs> there it goes. So our project vision, and I don't need to read this for you, but you all know that we're trying to actively connect our um, Washington state citizens to our history in a transparent and accessible building that houses our current and future needs. It's really important to us. And so right now we're in the design phase. Um, we still have our little pocket gopher friends that we're working with, trying to find them a nice, nice condo to live in. Um, and so once that's done, then, then we'll start on the building of our actual building. And so this is the North public entry off of Tumwater Boulevard. And, um, the architects did a really nice job of giving us kind of a rendering that is interactive that you can kind of see what's going on. You can see that there's lots of natural light. We're really trying to, um, help our employees feel that good vitamin D when we have it for those couple days a year. Um, that they get to soak it all in, although this year's been great. This is our South Public Plaza, kind of the walking in. And for those of you who don't know, the Secretary of State is the keeper of the state seal. So we would love to proudly display that state seal out front so everyone knows. And then our public lobby, kind of walking into the building and, and seeing the library and archives division off to the left, um, implementing as many natural elements as we can, which is why you see some of that beautiful wood element brought in. Um, the white furniture, it's not gonna be white, it's just a placeholder. Nobody stress out about how dirty that's gonna get because I, I feel you, that's gross. It's not gonna be all white, it'll be fine. Um, and then our research room, this is our reading room and then our research room is at the back and it kind of takes a quick turn makes you come around and see the people reading, but this is our library where people can come in and study and read and enjoy kind of, you know, the space. So while we call it the library archives building, this facility is gonna bring all of our departments within the office of the secretary of state together. And we're really looking forward to this because we will also have our elections, our corporation division, the combined fund drive possibly, or the productivity board. We're gonna have HR. IT. So we're looking at putting quite a few of our um, quite a few of our people together. I should pause that video for you. Um, quite a few of our people together so that we have we have people in one space. Right now we're spread out all across Olympia, and it's hard to get to know your neighbors and get to work together. And I know I'm totally going over on time, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, so we're really excited. What our slideshow didn't show you was the research room, and this is kind of a glimpse of what that research room will look like. Again, not with white tables or chairs, but nice open spaces where um, 
we can create some flexibility space for people who need who need modified support, who need maybe tables that raise and lower so that we can really work collaboratively with our researchers and provide them the best space and environment that they want to be able to sit in and to access our collection. So we're excited about that. Digital archives, little gem in our crown of all the great things that we do. Um, the Washington State Digital Archives is the nation's first archives dedicated specifically to the preservation of electronic records from both state and local agencies that have a permanent legal, fiscal, or historical value. It's located in Cheney, Washington, which is awesome. It's on the Eastern Washington University campus. Um, it, this facility was designed from the ground up to host this technically complex program. The digital archive serves to strengthen democracy by making public records available online worldwide 24 seven. Um, these records provide a valuable resource for the personal and professional needs of citizens, as well as contributing to government transparency. So this, this is like absolutely an amazing, an amazing part of the archives and for anyone who doesn't know, you can actually go onto the website. And we have a photo here. You can go onto the website and you can search for different photos and pull them up and, and really create some great history in your own home, in your office, whatever you want, because these photos are available and you can, you can download them, you can request them, but they're really a great way to own a little piece of our history. And we're super thankful that they're out there. We currently have, um, 242 million records in our databases at the digital archives. 85 million of those records are searchable online, meaning that they've been indexed, but we have 242 million records out there. So it's absolutely incredible. And the staff that you might be working with at digital archives are some of the staff that you work with uh, when you work in the Eastern branch, but it's Debbie and Frank, and then a whole lot of wonderful IT people who report to our IT division, but they work and support us and we're super grateful to have them. So um, digital archives is, it's where it's at. Like we're amazing in this area. And then we have digital access. So this is a really exciting group. And I also love this group. I love them all. I love everyone in this, in this division, but digital access team digitizes catalogs and preserves some of Washington's greatest treasures for easy access on the digital archive. So they're getting records in and they're preserving them and making them available. Recently, the team digitized and put online scrapbooks created by Muriel Little, a political columnist and state Senate hostess who was first to organize public tours of Olympia's legislative chambers. Little felt strongly about demystifying the lawmaking process and her scrapbooks give an intimate behind the scenes perspective of legislative sessions from 1961 to 1990. Um, which is pretty awesome. And so the scrapbook, one of the scrapbook images, um, page one shows Sergeant at Arms Charlie Johnson with Senate page Carl Samos in 1963. Page two shows, shows Joe Shabazz, Assistant Sergeant at Arms with Muriel Little in 1963. Digital projects currently underway include Senate committee recordings from 1973 to 2002 and House floor recordings from 1969 to 2006. I'm sorry, to 2016, um, we have oral history project focused on the black community in King County in the 1970s, which includes historic images, audio and transcripts. Um, and then we have timber cruise surveys from 1909, which document woodland areas to determine timber volume, species, composition and forest production allocation. These hand drawn surveys also document natural Topography like ridges and waterways, vegetation and soil types, human impacts like burning or logging and the built environment such as roads, houses and farms. So if you're working with these wonderful people, you are working with Maggie or Mary or Joanne. So and Joanne's featured up there in our little photo. So local grants, I'm sorry, cause I did not give a lot of time for questions, but it's okay. I think if we put them in there and I don't get to them, I will answer them all by email. There's too much good information. Uh, local grants. So every year we um, grant some local grants to local governments to make better use of technology, to help them um, get their file rooms organized, to um, get some technology tools. So we're really excited about this program. Um, 47 grants were awarded to 43 different agencies totaling over $1 million this year. 
And that's pretty awesome. Like we're pretty excited about that. Geographically, 13 or 28% went to Eastern Washington, 34 or 72% went to Western Washington. 28 agencies or 60% had received grants in the past rounds. 19 agencies or 40% were awarded their first grants. So most requested items were technology tools like scanners. We had um, organizing the file room, though the most requested item there was temporary staff. Digital imaging, um, we had building permits and plans and construction records that they were asking for some assistance with. And if you are lucky enough to um, submit a grant and get to work with us on that, then you will have the privilege of working with Bonnie, who is our new grant coordinator who started this week and we're super happy to have her on board. Um, so she is going to be your point of contact. And, and like I said, we just started this for, we just issued these grants. So be on the lookout for the next grant cycle in the spring. And, um, we're excited for you to, to apply. So the all foundation, this is a. This is a little little known program that we have here. The all foundation supports programs, collections and missions of the archives library and the Wa library, Washington talking book and burial library and legacy Washington and serves as the fiduciary for funds. Raised specifically to support these programs and collections donations to the all foundation are tax deductible under regulations of the IRS. The all foundation is governed by an 18 member board of trustees and we currently have a couple vacancies. So if you're interested, let us know, because we would love to talk with you. Um, but the goal is to include includes fostering a closer connection between libraries and their communities, enhancing the collection and vital state and government records, oral histories and biographies and providing greater access to educational material that document and share Washington's history. So this is a great group. Um, if you're a state employee, you can donate through the combined fund drive to this group. So just saying you have some options out there, but we would love it if you would like to volunteer as well. We would be thrilled to have you. So again, how can you be part of preserving our Washington state history? You can be part of the historical, the historical records project. You can volunteer. You can be part of our educational resources. Um, the Office of the Secretary of State, in an effort to increase accessibility to the historical records of Washington, initiated the Historical Records Project in 2002. Staff from the State Library and State Archives identified records from their collections for inclusion in the project, as well as those held by numerous local museums, genealogical, and historical societies. Currently, millions of searchable records are available free of charge on the Washington State Archives website, yet much work needs to be done. Countless numbers of records need to be transcribed and indexed in order to be beneficial to researchers and genealogists around the globe. This is where you come in. The bulk of accessible records would not be available for research if not for the tireless efforts of volunteers like you using Scribe. You can work from home at your own pace on equipment familiar to you. Volunteers are the lifeline of historical records project and vital to its success. So what is Scribe? Scribe is an online digital application that allows users to become honorary archivists like me. I'm an honorary archivist through the transcription and indexing of historical important records in Washington state. So you're able to kind of go online and help us get some of these indexed or transcribed. And again, if you would like more information, please reach out to us. We would be happy to help you and get set up. Outreach, we are here to help and we're excited to be out working with our stakeholders in the community. So last weekend, our archives and legacy staff attended the Pacific Northwest History Conference in the Tri-Cities. We had students from St. Martin's touring the archives and using our collections in Olympia yesterday. This morning, staff presented to the Washington PUD Association. We'll be at Educators Night at the Museum of the Washington State History Museum tonight. So look for us when you go to conferences, if you go to local community events, that's something where we wanna be out there and we wanna be talking about it. If you know of events that you think we should be at, let us know, we wanna come, we wanna know about it. So connecting with us, you can actually hear from us a lot. You can subscribe to our newsletter out of the archives, um, which is a fantastic newsletter that I subscribed to long before I ever came here, and it's wonderful. And then you can follow us on social media. Um, I actually get the alerts when we post something, and I have to tell you, I think our social media game is real strong. So check it out. Let us know. Um, but we would love to see you. We also have different listservs um, that provide, one that provides state and local government record updates, um, and you can subscribe to those. So we have lots of opportunities. 
and October is Archives Month. Woo, woo. It's great. So October 1st was the Archives Crawl at the Central Branch. The 24th is Trivia at the Time and Materials Tap House in Bellingham at 7 o'clock. That sounds like a great time. And October 31st, we're going to have our Haunted History of the Archives here in Olympia. So please come and join us. Be a part of it. And um, yeah, and look at our great poster. Let's let archives transport you. Look at that. It's awesome. So look at that. It's 158. I obviously left lots of time to talk about things, but I want to thank you for joining us. And if you do have any questions, please reach out and please um, connect with us. Like we want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. Um, I'm going to escape out of this and maybe go back to my WebEx and we'll see if I can connect back in there somehow. Um, but we are here for you. We want to, we want to share with you. We want you to know um, what we do and why we do it and why it should matter to you. So, um, if there are questions, please throw them in the chat. I would love to see them and be able to respond to you and answer them. But thank you for coming. Thank you for letting me ramble on for a full hour. I'm gonna have to drink a lot of water now, um, but I appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope that you know the true heroes of what we do here at the Washington State Archives are the staff. It's not me, I am an honorary archivist. I do not have a degree in archiving. Um, I have a ton of experience in leadership, and that is my goal and hope that I can create positive culture and create vision and leadership for the archives team, because these people are the masters of their trade. Nothing gets done without the staff here, and I hope that you all know that, and I hope that that is your experience working with them. And while I am fortunate enough to be the face right now, which hopefully that mellows out into the background at some point, um, know that that I am nothing without this staff and and the staff is really what makes the archive special. So I hope that you've enjoyed the presentation. I hope that if you have questions, we can answer them later. And I just want to say thank you. So, Randy, did you have anything you wanted to add there? Uh, just my thanks for uh, everyone participating today as we all learn more and more about the archives. And thank you so much, uh, Heather, for your leadership. I know that everyone's excited to and you're working with you and to come visit the archives. Yes, and Randy's correct. If you ever want to come visit the archives, any of our branches, please let us know. We would love to have you. So thank you all. Have a great afternoon.